The field entering the racetrack for the $200,000 George Morton Levy Memorial at one mile, and it is the outstanding confrontation of 1979 in harness racing. Bringing together two of the greatest aged pacers, older horses in the history of the sport, Tri Scotts, the leader this year, winner of 15 and 22 and $388,000, the million and a half dollar winner, Rambling Willie, and the outstanding three year old hot hitter who has won $821,000 this year alone. Number one, Tri Scotch, is the older champion of the year and he is in razor sharp form. He has won five of his last six races, 388,000, 15 wins and 22 starts. And for those who say, can he handle a half mile track? Well, the last time he was on one was here at Roosevelt back in July. He won the U.S. Pacing Championship in 157 and two fifths. And he has Shelley Goudreau, not too well known in New York City, but one of the outstanding drivers in the country in the, in the bike. 2B, Lime Time, Carmine Abatello driving. An outstanding three-year-old last year when he won nine of 11. He has had soundness problems. He has bounced back this year to win $91,000. And he did win over LeBaron Rouge as recently as September 22nd. And he is always dangerous, as is Abatello, his driver, one of the best in the sport. 3C, Rambling Willie, gallant nine-year-old veteran. He has won 216000 this year at nine, despite a bowed tendon, which put him out for the last two months. He has won 1577000 life. No pacer in the history of harness racing has won as much. Bob Farrington, who bought him for 15000 as a birthday present for his wife when this horse was a three-year-old, is hospitalized in Chicago. Joe Marsh, Jr. is driving for the injured Farrington. 4D, Wizard Almahurst, John Chapman driving. A star here earlier in the season. He has not been that sharp lately, although he has won three of his last five starts. Not quite as sharp as he was earlier, but he has won $201,000 and can never be counted out of any race that he is in. John Chapman drives. 5E, Le Baron Rouge. Lucien Fontaine, the driver of this $251,000 winner this year. Here's the late stretch charger. Look for him in the final stages. 6F flight director, a star at three when he won 492,000 last year, chasing the horse of the year Abercrombie around the country. He has been less successful this year, 101,001, but four starts back. He did beat Tri Scotch and LeBaron Rouge, and he has Hall of Fame driver Joe O'Brien, one of the best ever in the bike at the controls. 7G, Sirota Anderson, Norman DePlays, occupying the same role he did a year ago when he was lightly regarded, won last year's inaugural of the George Morton Levy at odds of 25 to 1. He drew the rail last year. He gets a seventh post tonight, tougher assignment, tougher field. 8H, hot hitter, the king of the three-year-olds. And this brilliant horse has won 821,000 this year, more than any harness horse ever in the history of harness racing in one season. He has won 14 races and has been 24 times first or second in 27 starts. And tonight, trainer Lou Matinas, the owners, and driver Hervé Fillion are taking him on to the age division, trying to beat the older horses. And nine, letter I, direct scooter, another of the three-year-old stars, 17 race winner, Warren Cameron drives. He has won won five straight races in a row, or did until recently, and then has been second his last three times. So he has eight straight races, first or second. He, too, taking on the older horses, starts from the second tier at the rail behind Tri-Scotch. The outstanding field of 1979 here in the George Morton Levy. The field has cumulative earnings of $5,611,826. 1A, Tri Scott, Shelley Goudreau. 2B, Lime Time, Carmine Abatello. 3C, Rambling Willie, Joe Marsh Jr. 4D, Wizard Almahurst, John Chapman. 5E, La Baron Rouge, Lucien Fontaine. 6F, Flight Director, Joe O'Brien. 7G, Sirota Anderson, Norman DePlays. 8H, Hot Hitter, Hervé Fillion. 9I, Direct Scooter, Warren Cameron. No better field of Pacers has been assembled this year and few ever better than the group you're watching right now as Jackie Lee calls the action of the George M. Levy Forest as the field leaves now. They're all the running inside. Try Scotch from the outside. Flight direct to go for the lead. Lime time moves up third. Direct scooter fourth parked on the far outside is hot hitter. Around the turn and down the back stretch. Try Scotch leads it. Flight director on the outside to challenge. Lime time gets the good triple on the inside third. Hot hitter comes on a closer fourth. Gap of uh, two lengths, direct scooter fifth, Rambling Willie sixth, Wizard Almar is the seventh at the quarter pole, flight director and Tri Scotch, they're going at each other, the quarter mile 28 and one. 
Around the paddock turn the first time. Flight director on the outside has the lead. Try scotch at the rail back to second. Hot hitter parked on the outside is third. At the rail line time fourth. They're at the top of the stretch the first time. Flight director on the outside. Try scotch at the rail. Heads apart for the lead. Along the inside line time and right alongside. Hot hitter is a close up fourth. Direct scooter moves to the outside fifth. Rambling Willie sixth. Wizard Almahurst is seventh. LeBaron Rouge and Sirota Anderson. We've got a half mile of 57 seconds flat. They go down the back stretch the final time. Along the inside, Tri Scotch has regained the lead for Shelley Goudreau. Flight director parked the outside second. Lime time gets the good trip along the inside third. Hot hitter moves to the far outside fourth. Direct scooter fifth. Rambling Willie moves up sixth. They're at the three quarter pole. Tri Scotch in front now by a full length. Three quarters on the board in one. 27 flat. Around the final turn, it's all Tri Scotch with the lead. Hot hitter on the far outside tries to close ground along the inside. Lime time comes on third. They're at the top of the stretch. They've got an eighth of a mile of pace along the inside. Tri Scotch with the lead. Out in the middle of the track, hot hitter. A straight nine and drive for the wire. Tri Scotch leads it by a little more than length. Lime time comes on. They're not going to catch Tri Scotch this evening. Under the wire, Tri Scotch wins it for Shelley Goudreau. He has equaled the track record of 156 and 3. A sensational performance this evening. And now back to Stan Bergstein. And a sensational call and an accurate one, Jack Lee, in all details and all respects. The power and the amazing force and speed of that mile, somewhat deceptive, because Tri Scotch never headed. <clears throat> but what a mile it was, as Shelley Goudreau. Parks, flight director, and Joe O'Brien cannot le leave him go. Lime time gets the trip right behind him, and no one needed to send Carmine Abatello to school to tell him he was in the garden spot. Here you see Tri Scotch. He has already put flight director away after that half and 57 seconds. Hot hitter mounts his challenge on the outside and reaches second here, half a length away, but he cannot get to this aged champion as they turn for home. Lime time still down along the rail, benefiting from the best trip of all, and gallant old rambling Willie at the rail comes on now, and the three champions draw away here as Tri Scotch with an incredible performance equals the track record on a cold, cold night. Lime time finishing second, rambling Willie coming on to be third, 150 six and three-fifths for Tri Scotch, who clinches Pacer of the Year honors, or certainly aged Pacer of the Year honors, with his performance tonight. Hot hitter finishes in a dead heat for a fifth with uh, Wizard Alma Hurst. So the three-year-old champion was not able to handle the older horses here tonight. It's official. 1A, Tri Scotch, $4, $3, $2.80. 2B, Lime Time, 1080 and 660 and uh, 3C Rambling Willie pays $4 to show. The 1, 2, 3 triple, A, B, and C, and that's how simple it was, $301 and uh, 50 cents. So Tri Scotch shows his credentials here, and for those who wondered if he could handle a half mile track, the answer is yes, and anything else in sight. The, the best field of Pacers assembled in America this year, in the world this year, and you have just seen what is apparently the best horse in America this year win it in incredible fashion. The man who designed that mile and who drove it, Shelley Goudreau. Shelley, you've trained and driven a lot of good ones, including the fastest filly in the world's history. Have you ever had a sharper horse than this? No, I never have. I've never had a horse that goes the miles he does week in and week out and stay just as sharp as when he was when we started with him. Well, he'd won five of his last six and just beaten the nose in the other one. And tonight, an incredible mile as flight director pushes you every step of the way. You're down there in a cold, cold night in 57 seconds and still come home in front all the way. Yeah, tonight uh, on a half-mile racetrack, I've never driven that much on a half-mile racetrack. And with the caliber of horse that Tri Scotch is and with the caliber of horses he was in with, I felt if I had any kind of shot at all at beating him, it was going to have to be on the front end. And you felt you couldn't leave O'Brien go, apparently. Well, I looked back around the first turn, and I seen Hervé right behind him with Hot Hitter, and there was no way I could let Joe go because then I was never going to get loose again. And your horse was able to keep rolling all the way in front. He's, I tell you, the horse is so strong. He's a big horse, and he just, there's just doesn't seem to be any end to him. 
Well, it doesn't seem to be, and the happy part of that is that the man who discovered him and bought him is here, too, the principal owner of Tri Scotch, Tom Crouch from Oak Brook, Illinois. Tom, congratulations on a sensational victory here tonight. Thank you. We're very happy, Stan. Tell us how you got this horse. He is not exactly classically bred, even though his sire was by Brett Hanover. The now dead My Scotch Brett was not one of the best horses in the country. I had a friend in Lexington that had the horse for sale. And he called me and wanted to sell the horse when he's a two-year-old. So I went down and, and uh, looked at the horse and trained him. I liked him. I bought him that day. Well, Tom Crouch has bought some of the best bred horses in America. So he also had the astute judgment to buy this one when he saw him, even though he lacks some of the classic lines. And it looks like you have the best pacer in the sport right now, Tom. I'm sure he's the best pacer well, in the sport. He's a great horse. To you and your partners and to Shelley Goodrow, who did the great job in training and driving, congratulations. Try Scotch, winner of the George M. Lever Memorial in track record equaling time.